So today we have a whole array of products and strategies that are available for orchard spray situations, even small fruits, but we're going to be dwelling on apple. So what do you think, Kyle? Big job, isn't it, to cover it all? It is. No, there's a lot, a lot that goes into control mm -hmm. of, um, of insects and diseases during the growing season. But one thing that's really critical when looking at pest management during the growing season is making sure that you time things correctly. Yeah, so whether that is at bud break or full bloom, et cetera. So we just want to go through a uh, growing yeah. season yeah, and talk yeah. about some of the things we would do. It's real handy to have those plant development phenologies to help yes. when to schedule sprays. And we have like uh, bud break, just before the buds break, there's advantages in uh, applying insecticides for the control of mites and aphids and uh, other kinds of small insects that have hatched out and developed like leaf hoppers, et cetera. And so that's very handy. And then when we talk about getting into the pre-bloom, you know, the buds are starting to open up and you're starting to see the coloration of the blossoms. And then we have blossom time, which is the fullness of the, the blossoming is just beautiful in the orchard situations or in your home backyard. But blossom situations, do we do anything during that time? Um, in, in the entomological world, we do nothing because there's a concern about um, and any kind of injury done to our pollinating insects, such as the honeybees. That's, that's a good point. You really need to keep those mm -hmm. pollinators healthy. Um, there are a few diseases that you can control for during that blossom time. During that though. time. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to be controlling for apple scab or rust, um, that bloom time is a great time to, great time to be applying for it. Uh, you can all, fire blight will also often come in through the flower the flower buds. Yeah. And so this yeah. is also a great time to control for fire blight if you have a history of it in your in your area. So fungicides, no effects on pollinators. Uh, generally, no, That's no, good. they don't. That's so. really good. And so you have that window of opportunity there. Yes. And then our season doesn't really seriously begin until after petal fall, and that's when we would apply something for plum curculio which is a, a notorious pest that uh, just really mangles the appearance of, of uh, <clears throat> the apple as it develops. And then we have codling moth, we have oriental fruit moth, a couple of generations there. So as we get well into the season after petal fall, almost up to harvest, it seems like we have an array of different kinds of insects that we need to be concerned about. Toward the latter part of the season, apple maggot. And uh, that's when the apples are large and juicy and so those maggots are trying to capitalize on that resource before we can get our teeth into those apples. They're smart. <laughs> no, that's, that's lucky that with the insects, you don't really have to worry about control until a little bit later in the season. I know with a lot of the, the fungal pathogens, you want to start controlling for those really early, um, mm -hmm. almost right at bud break, because there are, as the, uh, as the buds are breaking and as those first leaves are starting to emerge, mm -hmm. if we have a, a cool, long, uh, prolonged spring, that just provides a lot of chance for those fungal pathogens to infect those newly emerging leaves. Yeah. But one of the great things about, about these diseases is there's a big environmental component to when they'll actually infect. Mm -hmm. And so in addition to looking at the growth stage of the, um, of the tree, it's also a good idea to monitor weather patterns. And so if we are going to have a lot of, um, going to have some moisture, you may want to right, do a, a yeah. fungicide spray. Yeah. During the course of a growing season, if you uh, very loyally follow an orchard spray, you might be applying um, 10, 12 sprays through that whole season. Right? Yeah, you know, every seven to 10 days, every, depending every on your 10, product. 14 days, maybe. Yeah. And there are alternatives. There's the wait and see approach, of course, and that would mean like in the insect world, you know, um, you would uh, try to do some monitoring before you would apply. So if you want to reduce your sprays, although there's some risk, orchard sprays I would say were probably the, the sure bet that you're going to have something nice and juicy yep. like some of these apples here. Uh, but we have monitoring devices such as sticky globes for apple maggot. We have pheromone traps uh, for codling moth, two generations per season. So whenever we see um, plum curculia, or I'm sorry, apple maggot here, on here, that means it's time to treat. Okay, maybe for a week or two afterwards, okay. but maybe separated by a week to 10 days. Coddling moth, when you start seeing those in the traps, that means that you could go ahead and treat and keep following the populations through the season. Various kinds of strategies. Okay. Anything else you want to add, Kyle? You know, the only, only thing about um, 
any time you do have a pesticide program, you do want to follow that pre-harvest interval. If we're yeah. going to be eating these apples, we need to make sure that there's been enough time between our last application and the time when we're going mm -hmm. to consume them that they are healthy enough to eat. Yeah, that would be right. Yep. So check those labels, check the directions, pre-harvest interval before you can take that final into a nice juicy apple. Mm -hmm.